you have an office space, a spare bedroom that you want to turn into a podcast studio, this is the video for you. How's it going, y'all? Welcome to my podcast production studio. This is the studio that I produce podcasts, not only for me, but for my clients. By the end of the video, you get to know what equipment I use, how I use it, and how you'll be able to set it up. But before we get started, I want to let y'all know that there is going to be a Google Docs in the description that lists every piece of equipment and software that I'm currently using for my podcast studio. Things change, and I want y'all to be a part of that change. So click the link in the description. You have access to a Google Docs that has a list of everything that I'm currently using. All right. Let's get started. So the goal of this setup is essentially this. I want to record high quality podcasts for my clients so that they're getting really good audio, really good video, and it's just as good as any other podcast that's out there on the internet. And most importantly, I want to make sure that it's easy for me to manage it because I'm a one man band. I want clients to come in here, sit down, and I don't want to be tinkering or fighting with the computer, fighting with the roadcaster, or fighting with microphones. I want everything to just work. And that's it. That's this. That's the whole goal of the setup. And also redundancy, having multiple backups. But we're going to get into that later in the video. Let's go on. Let's jump right into it. And let's talk about equipment. Equipment is probably the most important thing in this setup. I mean, it's it's everything. With the equipment list, there's really two categories. You have your video and you have audio. For video, we have cameras, HDMI cables, video switchers, monitors, tripods, and lights. For audio, we have microphones, mic arms, or mic stands, XLR cables, a mixer, and a special quarter to auxiliary cable. So let's start off with the video. For the wide shot of the entire room, I use a Sony a7 IV with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, and that shot is able to get the entire room where my clients are sitting in here. Now for the tight shots of the close-ups of the clients, I use a Sony a7C for each angle with a 50 millimeter lens. That way I can get a really close-up shot of the guest. None of the cameras have batteries plugged in and they are actually connected with a dummy battery or a V-mount battery to get unlimited power. Essentially, I plug a dummy battery into my camera and the other side of that dummy battery has a plug. You can just plug into an outlet and you can pretty much get unlimited power and not have to worry about your camera dying. The dope thing about my video setup is that my main shot is not on the ground and quite literally I only use one tripod because tripods tend to make a small space even smaller. So I've incorporated a auto pole. So my main shot, the wide shot is actually attached to an auto pole. So I have an auto pole where it attached to the sides of my walls and I have my camera hanging from it basically and that frees up so much space. One of my other shot is actually attached to my desk with a Elgato wave arm. So my Sony cameras are really light. They can actually be held by the arms and I can adjust the angle and get the right close up for the clients. That way I don't have to worry about my clients bumping into the tripod, falling over the tripod, falling over the light stand. Even my light, my Godox VL150, is attached to my auto pole. That way I don't have to worry about real estate in this room. So either my camera or lights are on an auto pole or a Elgato wave arm. And the Elgato wave arm can hold up my cameras with no problem at all. So only one camera is on a tripod and that is one A7C. That one is right next to me while I'm producing. Another thing that I like to add is my video switcher. So the A10 Mini Extreme ISO is a video switcher that enables you to connect cameras into it via an HDMI. So my camera, the A7 IV, takes a standard HDMI cable. My A7Cs have a micro HDMI cable. So I connect the HDMI cable to each camera and then I run the ends to the A10 Mini Extreme ISO, and that way I'll be able to connect a monitor to the back of the A10 so I can see each camera angle individually, but I can also connect an additional monitor to showcase the program out. So if my client wants to see themselves, 
they can see themselves and I could have another monitor dedicated for me to see every camera angle. It's really dope. So when I connect an SSD to the back of the A10 mini Extreme ISO, I'd be able to record on there by hitting the record button at the top. You know it's recording because it'll turn red and you'll be able to see how much hard drive space you have left on the SSD with the time running and everything. You can also run audio directly from your Rodecaster Pro or your mixers and get that audio plugged into the A10 Mini Extreme ISO and basically not have to edit the video because the audio from your Rodecaster Pro will go directly into your A10 Mini. It's a game changer. And the audio cable that I use for that will be listed in the description. Don't get any other cable because they will not work. I've tried every cable in the world. Um, I found the right cable by watching one of Tom Buck's videos. He's this great YouTuber and this is his lane and he suggested it. I got it and I never had any issues with it. So the link for that audio cable will be in the description. One thing I wanna add about the A10 Mini is make sure that you have the microphones on and you have the volumes adjusted because you can actually not be recording anything when you think you are. So yeah, make sure you have it turned on and plug in your headphones. The Rodecaster Pro audio could be really good, but the A10 Mini's audio could be just really bad. So make sure you wear headphones for that. That's how I'm able to connect every camera together, do all the switching and add audio to it. And also connect an SSD that way I can record every camera angle with the audio baked in. That way I'm saving time. I don't have to rush into Final Cut Pro, make some edits, make some adjustments, syncing audio, and it's a nightmare. Gone are those days. Everything is pretty much done when you hit stop recording. So let's talk about lighting. So I use the Godox VO 150 as my main key light. And recently I added Elgato key light for a light. I have one light here and I have one in the back here for that room divider. And I have a couple of newer, cheaper lights just to add some accent lighting and hair light for my clients. Lighting is really important. You want to make sure that you are lighting your clients really well. Yeah, that's pretty much with my whole lighting setup. It isn't crazy. I just don't have a bunch of light stands because my lighting is mounted on the desk or on my auto pole. Now let's talk about audio, which is the main thing, right? So for audio, I use the Shure SM7B microphone. They're fantastic. They're great. Um, there are other alternatives out there, but I really love the Shure SM7B mics. They have a really good look to them and they have a great sound. So the Shure SM7B is attached to my Rodecaster Pro 2. The Rodecaster Pro 2 is a great tool for audio production. You can connect up to four microphones into it. You can plug in a micro SD card in the back to record onto that. You can connect it to your computer via USB-C. It's, it's a great audio interface. Like it's, it's really good. For mic arms, I use the Elgato low profile arms. I have two low profile arms and they look really good on camera. I'm able to hide the XLR cables and have like a really clean, neat setup. I really love the look of the low profile arm. They hide the cable pretty well. They're really slick and cool. It just makes my setup look even better. As far as XLR cables, just any standard XLR cable would work. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I do want to do a video showcasing like my entire content creation setup which is something entirely different where I've incorporated an overhead rig and a uh, stream deck and a bunch of other stuff. So, so that video is coming soon, but I just really wanted to share this video because I got, I always get a lot of questions about podcast production, uh, what to use, what not to use, how to use it, how to set it up. So in this video, I pretty much went over everything and I will be doing a live video soon showcasing everything. So stay tuned for that. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna list every equipment down in the description. That way you can see every piece of equipment that I use and how it all comes together. All right, if you like this video, comment down below. If you have any questions, comment down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.